Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my level up guide for Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 8. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the different methods that I've been using myself to get XP fast and how you can unlock all of the different battle pass rewards for this season. I am currently level 199 and by the time that this video ends, I will be level 200. That also happens to be the level that you need in order to unlock the final battle pass reward, which is the Golden Rune style for Thorin. As per usual, I've included timestamps in the description below so that it's easier to skip the specific parts. And if you revisit this video, it'll be easier to pick up where you left off. Let's get started. I'm not entirely sure why Epic decided it was a good idea to remove the weekly Epic and Legendary quests, but that is a discussion for another time. In order to go from level 1 to 100, you will need a total of 7,780,000 XP. That's actually the most difficult part, because in order to go from level 100 to level 200, you will only need 6,171,250 XP. As per usual, I bought the first 100 tiers of the battle pass so that I could make this video sooner, but I expect that once this season is over, I'll be anywhere between level 275, maybe even level 300. That's what happened last season. I've included a link in the description that will take you to a useful overview where you can see the amount of XP that you need for every single level, and there's also a table that will show you exactly what you need to do on a daily basis if, for example, you start playing today and you still want to reach level 200 by the end of the season. At the moment of making this video, there are 58 days left before Chapter 2 Season 9 is going to start. And if you're still level 1, that roughly translates to 241,000 XP per day in order to get to that goal. Alright, method number 1 is going to be the punch cards. At the moment of making this video, we have 20 different punch cards that are available in-game. I'm expecting that as the season progresses, we will get 2 additional punch cards every week. This might be a bit more or a bit less, but based on the updates that we've gotten so far, I think it's a valid assumption. We're also getting the Fort Nightmares update in a couple of days, and I think that we'll either get additional punch cards because of that, or they're gonna include special quests, which most likely will give free rewards and a bit of XP. This next part might sound a little bit confusing, I'll try to keep it as simple as I can. Every single punch card consists of 5 quests. Um, the quests differ in rarity, for example, you start a quest line off with a common quest, then you go to Uncommon, Rare, Epic, and you finish off with Legendary. Assuming that you're new to the game and you just started completing stuff, you will also get additional XP the first time that you complete any punch card. So if you take a random punch card, the first punch, so the first quest, is going to give you 12,000 XP, the next quest will give you 14,000 XP, then 16,000, then 18,000, and the final punch is going to give you 20,000 XP. The four latest punch cards that we've gotten those do not go up that way. All of the single punches will give you 30,000 XP. Now, in order to make it simple, 16 out of the 20 punch cards will give you a total of 80,000 XP, and then the other four punch cards out of the 20 will give you a total of 150,000 XP. That already brings the total amount of XP that you can get with these punch cards to 1,880,000. Now it gets even better. If you saw my video from two days ago, you already know this, but if you're new to this one, Fortnite recently implemented an update that will give you additional XP for completing any single quest. When you complete a common quest, that is 2500 XP. If you complete an uncommon quest, it's 2650 XP. Then for a rare quest, you get 2750 XP. For an epic quest, you get 2900 XP. And for completing a legendary quest, you get 3750 XP. The total of that is 14,550 XP. If we add this to the XP that you get for completing a punch card for the first time, it's going to bring your total XP for punch cards to 2,171,000. Now with that being said, I want to transition over into the second method. Unfortunately, you can only complete your punch cards one time, but you can complete the quest lines from a specific character as many times as you want. That means that if you have 3 hours to play on a single day and you want to spend all of that doing quests, you can keep getting those 14,550 XP rewards uh, by just completing the same quest line over and over again. If you want to do this efficiently, I'd first figure out which of the quest lines are easier for you to complete. Some of them have very difficult quests and require a lot longer, and other ones you can basically complete in one game. I've included a guide for them in the description below, so check which ones are more convenient for you. Two more tips that I have for you is that you want to enable multiple quest lines at once. At any given moment, you can have four different quest lines active. Uh, that means that you can talk to four different NPCs or go to a phone booth and get a quest line that way. Additionally, you also want to try to play together with your friends. If you don't have any friends online, you can leave your epic ID in the comment section down below and see if there's anyone that wants to play with you. The reason why I'm mentioning that is because all of the different quests have party assist. That means that if one of your teammates does something that you have active, you will both get XP for that. Now, if you're in a party with four people, this is gonna go very fast. Like I said before, this is unlimited, but I'm assuming that most people will not be spending their entire day completing quests. 
So let's just assume that it's reasonable that someone were to complete four different quest lines on a daily basis, which would be good for a total of 58,200 XP per day. If you were to do that every single day until the end of the season, that would be good for a total of 3,375,600 XP. Like I said, this can be more or less depending on how much time you want to spend on it. While we're on the topic of quests, let's talk about the daily punch card. This is something that resets every single day and it gives you three different quests that you can complete. And every single one of those quests will give you 30,000 XP. They are actually very simple. So the first one is always complete quests and then it usually has a five. So you need to complete a total of five different quests. It doesn't matter uh, which character they belong to. But once you complete a total of five different quests, you will get 30,000 XP. The second one is complete quest of a specific character and then you usually have to do three of them. And the last one is to complete a legendary or an epic quest. Um, sometimes it's just one legendary quest and sometimes it's either two epic ones or two legendary ones. It's relatively easy. If you were to do this every single day, that's a total of 1,740,000 XP that you can still get until the end of the season. It's really starting to stack up quite nicely, isn't it? Moving on, we're gonna go over to the weekly punch card. This one, as it's in the name, resets once per week and it offers you three different quests that you can complete and every single reward is 50,000 XP. So that's a total of 150,000 XP. It's really not that much when you put it into perspective and compare it with the weekly and the daily quest. But hey, if you can do this, it's always nice. So the first quest always seems to be complete a daily punch card. We just talked about those. The second one is to place top 10 with friends and you need to do that a total of five times. And the last one is to spend bars. Uh, and usually this is spending 500 bars. These quests have always seemed the same to me, but maybe they'll change it around later in the season. For now, I wouldn't say they are very difficult to do. I think that it's going to reset for eight more times until the season ends. So if you haven't done the one for this week already, there's a total of nine times that you can still do this, which will be good for a total of 1,350,000 XP. All right, the next method is going to be supercharged XP. The only way that you can get supercharged XP at the moment is by signing into your account going to the lobby and sometimes even starting a game but then you realize oh i have other stuff to do and i can't really play today what it's going to do is take the amount of xp that you would have gotten from your daily punch card and then convert that into supercharged xp that basically means that once your xp is supercharged you will get five times the amount of xp for opening a chest getting an elimination surviving a storm circle pretty much everything that gives you xp is going to be multiplied immensely now this effect will only last for the amount of daily quests that you hadn't completed. So the total XP that you can get for the daily quest is 90,000 per day. And if you didn't complete two of them, then your next 60,000 XP is going to be supercharged. And once you complete that, it's going to be normal again. Moving on to a fan favorite, this one is going to be creative XP. This has been there for, I don't know how many seasons, but everyone seems to love it. And it's also very easy to obtain. What you want to do is start up your game, start a match of creative and just stand there. For every 15 minutes that you stand AFK in creative, you're going to get 25,200 XP. You can do this for a total of up to five times and then you need to wait until the next day and then it's going to reset and you can continue. So basically, whenever your daily punch card resets, it also means that your creative XP will be reset. So you can do this for a maximum of five times per day, which will be good for a total of 126,000 XP. And if you were to do this for every single day until the end of the season, it's going to be good for a total of 7,308,000 XP. That's insane. The next method that I want to talk about is the imposters game mode. Unfortunately, we had a nerf recently, which kind of reduced the rewards for everything with about 50%. But playing imposter still gives you such an insane amount of XP. Usually a match will last anywhere between five and seven minutes, and you want to be assigned the role of an agent. If you get this, you can just run around the map, complete tasks left and right, and those will all contribute to your total reward you can also do this in a private match with friends and for example if you have three friends online and you jump into a match of imposters start a private match you can make sure that your friends who are the imposter can stand afk and then you can be the one to complete all of the tasks and if you do that i think it's going to give you a total reward of about 15,000 xp per match it's very very good like I said, this used to be a lot better. If you were to do this before they nerfed it, you would get about 25,000 to 30,000 XP per match. But hey, unfortunately, we can't have it all. I'm not going to link a specific amount of XP to this. It's practically unlimited because you can play this game mode as much as you'd like. The last method that I want to talk about is a Team Rumble loot path. I really haven't been using that all that much this season, but I know that it's still quite effective. What you want to do is start up a match of Team Rumble, land at any named location that you know uh, will not have a lot of players there, so no teammates and no enemies, and then just open every single chest, ammo box, and ice machine that you come across. Team Rumble doesn't have the nerfed chest spawn rate, so you can just start at point A, 
work your way to point B and get XP for every single thing that you open. I think that the other methods that I covered are a lot better to get XP fast, but if you want to change some things up, then this is definitely a good alternative. And that's pretty much it. We're currently not even halfway throughout the season, so I think that Epic will definitely add some more ways on how you can get XP. They might change some things around a little bit, but I don't think it's all that unreasonable for you to start at level 1 now and then still to reach level 200 at the end of the season. With all of that said, that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and use code PERFECTSCORE in the item shop if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you at the next one. Peace!